So um, thank you so much, uh, Michelle, for this uh, for this overview. Um, and so we have a, a number of uh, panelists um, to uh, to provide some uh, to comments and reflections on um, on this. Um, and I'd we'll like to start with uh, Michael Bonser, who is um, uh, Minister Council in the Canadian Mission. Um, and by the way, all the um, the full biographies are um, distributed there, so I won't go. Uh, to them, but Michael has a very extensive background uh, both in government and outside of government in humanitarian human rights um, uh, uh, areas. So Michael, you have to Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank all of you for, for being here today. It's a fairly charged day in the UN, so it's, I'm delighted to see so many people have come out to this particular event, which, is, which I think is a, is a really, really important launch. Um, the 10th edition of the Global Peace Index comes up in our view, at a very important moment. And as the report indicates, and as Michelle has said, there are some very worrying trends around terrorism, political instability, and increases in refugees and displaced persons worldwide that I think capture all of our attention. And, and really, if you look at just the, the, the refugee and migration crisis, if that's not a clarion call to action globally, then I'm not actually sure what, what it would be. But equally, there are important opportunities um, that, that are before us as member states, as civil society organizations, as UN agencies. The successful adoption of Agenda 2030, and many, much of that came through in the, in the first presentation. And a renewed focus on the plight of refugees and migrants globally, culminating in what we see to be two global summits in September of this year, which offers genuine opportunities for political momentum and leadership that I think we can leverage and capitalize on. And I think in, in the context of the launch of a global peace index, hopefully, can make a difference in terms of um, improving positive peace in countries and, and, uh, and, and addressing some of those drivers of conflict and instability. And it's on that last point that I think I'd like to reflect uh, a little further today. Now, we've seen the numbers, uh, 20 million refugees, 40 million internally displaced persons worldwide, 231 million people, or roughly 3% of the global population, are migrants, uh, including those who have moved for family, better economic opportunities, or simply for survival. And let's face it, some countries have been more heavily affected by this than others. But I can't think of one country around the world that has not been affected in any way by these trends. Now, I'd like to, for a moment today, talk a little bit about, uh, uh, I was, you know, I take as, as a source of pride as a Canadian diplomat that we appear in a, as a green country on that list. Um, but it doesn't come easily, and we don't take it necessarily for granted. You know, in Canada, we have, for anyone who knows the history of our country, and I'm not assuming that, that people do, um, but we do pride ourselves as a country of, of immigrants. We pride ourselves as a nation uh, that has been built around people who've come from faraway places to build their lives, often by choice, sometimes fleeing from, from other situations in our country. We have more than 200 different ethnic groups in Canada. And 13 of those groups have populations of over 1 million people in our country. So we are living diversity every single day. And what that means from a social, political, and economic perspective is something that we have grappled with largely successfully, but not perfectly, for a long period of time. But looking to the future, it's clear as we look at the trends of the Canadian population that we need to ensure that we are making the right choices to leverage this diversity, to ensure social cohesion, and ensure sustained, strong economic growth in our country and make sure that I keep coming back here and, and talking about us as a green country on that, on that very important map. But in the face of this, we have also witnessed worrying global trends around xenophobia, uh, in which some see the, to, seem to view diversity, whether it's cultural, religious, political, social, as a threat. And this is leading to policies and actions that, in our view, do have a troubling effect for far too many people around the world, and it comes as no surprise to those of you here, they face harassment, discrimination, and violence simply for being who they are. Uh, Canada has not been immune to certain reactionary, discriminatory incidents uh, that have occurred to various terrorist attacks. And I think about recent anecdotal information around hate crimes in our country. For example, that reveal I, what we see is a long-term trend of a shift from ethnicity-related hate to those linked to religion, with crimes against Muslim community populations in particular causing us some concern. So again. We don't take this for granted. We are not a perfect society, but we are working really very, very hard to, to ensure that we do respect diversity and we see that as a point of, a point of departure of great strength for us. So instead of giving in to the fear and hatred that, that this fear of diversity can, can bring, we've taken an approach to welcoming diversity and building upon a model that we would call uh, essentially peaceful pluralism. Now this is not new. There's been a narrative around this uh, with the change of government in Canada in, in uh, October of last year. 
Um, but the reality is this is not new for our country. In 1971, we were the first country in the world to adopt a multi multiculturalism as an official policy of our country. And by doing so, affirm the value and dignity of all Canadian citizens, regardless of racial or ethnic origins, language, or religious affiliation. In 1988, this was concretized as the Canadian Multiculturalism Act. And, and since then, bolstered and backed up through a whole series of programmatic interventions to, to bridge gaps between communities, to build civic pride, no matter where you're from in the world, and you've come to kind of build a sense of what being Canadian means, but not losing sight of who you are or where you come from. And, and we think it's had, it's had good effect. It's in short, it's a series of programs intending to bring people together to respect diverse backgrounds and raise awareness of the significant number of success stories that exist not in spite of uh, immigration, refugees, and migrants coming to our country, but because of these, these shards. Canada's also maintained a strong focus on human rights, both at home and abroad. And in our view, human rights are universal, indivisible, interrelated, and interdependent. There's no, uh, we don't have any hesitation in saying that. The promotion and protection of peaceful pluralism, respect for diversity, and all human rights, including freedom of religion and political belief, is an integral part of who we see ourselves to be in this world. And we feel that states, including our own, have, a, have an obligation to respect and protect human rights without discrimination of any kind, including the rights of women and children, indigenous populations, and people of sexual minority. States have also shared a responsibility to promote respect for diversity of, and all human rights globally, including freedom of religion and belief. Now, I say all of that, and it sounds a bit principled, and it sounds like I'm standing on a soapbox and telling you all how to live your lives. And I don't mean it to be, because we know full well that we're not perfect at home. And it doesn't, you know, I, I was reflecting on this in the context of the permanent forum on Indigenous issues a number of weeks ago, when we had ministers come to town and talk about the, the shortcomings of, of within Canada over a period of time towards Canadian First Nations and Indigenous populations. The issues facing families who've lost, or uh, uh, missing and murdered Aboriginal women is one that we grapple with every single day. So we are not perfect and we don't pretend to be when I, when I espouse what we believe to be our core values. But nevertheless, they are core for us. They are, they are principally part of who we are. Uh, we do try to grapple with these, these issues domestically and we try to project this, uh, this from a foreign policy. So because of the, pro the approach that we've taken, we see immigration far from being a source of uh, drain on our society or refugees or you know, welcoming we see it as a source of strength. Once in Canada, we see that, uh, that people of diverse background, diverse heritage, diverse uh, nations bring many positive contributions to our society and to our economy. And we continue to work to try to project those stories and that narrative outwards. Uh, that we place a high priority on the effect of settlement and integration of newcomers. And our approach to integration, and I want to be clear, it's integration and not assimilation, is one based on social and community inclusion and mutual adaptation. So that's adaptation by newcomers to our society, of course, but also adaptation of our society to welcome those newcomers and ensure they understand that they are welcome and their place in Canada is, is firm and for the long term. You know, in closing, um, I reflect a little as well on, on a quote uh, from our Prime Minister Trudeau. And he, said, and he said, we have a responsibility to ourselves and to the world to show that inclusive diversity is a strength and a force that can vanquish intolerance radicalism and hate. Now that is what we try to do as, as diplomats here. That's what we try to project uh, in terms of our own society and our own forward approach to these issues. And I hope in, in, in giving a little bit of the Canadian narrative in a very short amount of time today, I give you a sense of how we are trying to try to take these issues forward and, and ensure that as a nation we continue to stay on the good side of this global events over the long term. And thank you for the opportunity to appreciate uh, the honesty uh, you, uh, you take to reflect on your own country um, uh, from um, a peace perspective and from a, a global peace perspective and, and in particular highlighting which I think is very important also with regard to the sustainable development goals for, um, which are universal that even if you are um, at the top um, in the top 10 um, it is very difficult um, to, to stay there and you have still uh, issues um, that you have to deal with and perhaps because of our globalizing world uh, because of um, 
the transnational character of, of a lot of the problems we face in the world, um, this has become, I think, even more difficult um, for, for all of us. So thank you so much for that, um, for that uh, perspective. Um,